So today I want to talk to you about the aside tag, how it's sometimes incorrectly used and how to actually use it. Now, a lot of times I see the aside tag being used for something like a sidebar on a website, but that's not how it's supposed to actually be used. Instead, the aside bar is used in order to bring out a little bit of extra information about what's inside the article or section of that web page. So let's say you had an article about a, something that happened in history and you had several different key players that were involved in this historical event. You might use an aside in order to give a little bit of extra information about it. Now, typically an aside is only gonna be a couple, three sentences long. This is not gonna be a whole nother article. So this just provides a little bit of extra information about the bigger part of the web page without detracting from that web page. So let's take a look at how we would create something like this. So here I have a simple paragraph and I'm gonna put an aside around my paragraph tag. Now, when you look at this, you're going to notice that there's not any difference between it and the paragraph. So we need to try to go in and styles. That way it will stand out. That way, if a person wants to skip reading it, they can because it's never required for our article. It's just optional additional information. So I'm going to come into my style.css and Underneath where I have my section for my main content area, where I have things like my article and stuff like that, I'm going to create a side. And I have that as my selector. And now I'm going to start generating some styles based on it. So I have, let's say, a width. And I'm going to give it a width of 20%. However, I don't want it to get too big. So I'm going to say max width, and I'm going to specify something like 150 pixels. Additionally, I don't want to get too small, and so I'm going to specify min width, and I'm going to specify 100 pixels. I'm going to save this real quick. And now you notice that I have a little piece here that's standing out. However, I have a big empty white space around it and I don't want that. If I resize, you'll notice that my box will get bigger and smaller depending upon how big my, my browser window is and the relative size of my article and main section. Now, in order to make this wrap and flow around it, I'm gonna use something called the float. And the float is going to take us out of the normal flow of our web page, going from top to bottom, left to right, which is standard unless you are, have a default language which flows differently. And so we're going to allow other elements to wrap around this. And I can choose to float either left or right. Those are my two most common ones. I do have an inline end and an inline start, which can also be used. I'm just going to specify left, however. So in order to use a float, there's two things that need to happen. Number one is I need to be using a block level element. And that's pretty typical. The second thing is I need to specify a width. If I don't specify a width, it doesn't know how big to make that containing box, and therefore it can't flow other elements around it. When I reload, notice that when I float to the left, you can see my box over here on the left hand side, just like it was before, but now I have text over here on my right hand side. If I choose to float right, it will move the box over to the right hand side and the text will flow around the left of it. So let's go ahead and change this to be right real quick. And just to help this stand out a little bit, I'm gonna set a slightly different background color. And I'm not going to be very off, so I'm just going to make it EEE, -E -E, which is just a really, really light gray. And I'm also going to put a small border around this. Once again, this helps create a visual separation. Now, when I've done this, you can see I have a little piece off to my right-hand side. 
I have my text that I can see and that works for me. Uh, there are a couple of issues that will come out and we're just going to keep these things in mind so that we'll always be working towards fixing them. And that is number one, I have, because of the border, my text right along the left hand side in this instance is now pushed up against the border and this will make the text hard to read. So I'm going to want to add a padding to this to give it a little bit of space. I will also probably want to create a little bit of a margin space to my left hand side anytime I flip something to the right. That way I have some natural space and my content doesn't get pushed all the way up against that edge as well. So in this case, I'm going to create a margin to my left, a padding that goes all the way around, and I'll also have a margin on the bottom once again so that I have a little bit of space and items don't get pushed right up against it. This helps make sure it's separated. So it's easy to say this is standing out. It doesn't have to be read, but I'm going to keep it minimal amount. So that way, if we do want to read it, we can. So first I'm going to set padding to be 10 pixels. Then I'm going to set my margin to left, 10 pixels, a margin to my bottom to also be 10 pixels. When I reload, you'll notice that this doesn't create a huge difference. It's just a little bit of one, but it makes it much easier to kind of stand out. I'm not crowding my extra information, and this is the proper way of using your aside. Now your aside can also include an image and other tags, but we're not trying to take away from our main article. We're providing additional information. So we don't want to do too much, but this is a really nice way to be able to simply go in and provide some additional information about an article.